Yeah, Global Forum. My name is Edie Lush, live here in the Taj Hotel in London. Really pleased to stay with this theme of global healthcare and looking at how we continue to vaccinate the world. Got a fantastic panel for you now. Odette Cesari from AXA Life. We also have Dr. Vijay Chautaiwali in charge of the Foreign Affairs Department for the BJP and Dr. Shankar Musunuri from Occugen. Welcome to all of you. So let's get straight into it. Let's start with Dr. Chautaiwali. What's your view now on the route out of the pandemic, if we can say that, or at least to the next stage? I think India has come out of the second wave, but still the infections are there and we need to be vigilant and the states are vigilant and they are putting their best efforts to contain the spread of the pandemic. But at the same time, on the positive side, uh, India's vaccination program has uh, gone into a full stream. And so far, we have vaccinated more than 300 million adults above 18 years. And currently, we are uh, for last one week, at least we are uh, vaccinating close to 5 million people per day, which is quite a significant number. Uh, Indian government has changed and tweaked the policy of vaccination a little bit and they are giving free vaccination to all the adults uh, since 21st of June uh, and it has shown a, a remarkable increase in number of vaccinations. There is a little bit issue of vaccine hesitancy uh, in some parts of India, especially rural India and with the help of government and uh, social service organizations, NGOs, uh, this vaccine hesitancy, people are trying to convince uh, the villagers that the vaccine is the best protective mechanism against the virus and people are responding it. So uh, I think that uh, by the end of the year, significant number of Indian population will get vaccinated both the doses. Uh, and it will be uh, quite a significant achievement looking at the number and the diversity and geographical spread uh, of the country like India is concerned. Thank you. So Dr. Musanuri, let's come to you now. Part of the end game may be brought by the Covaxin jab, which is being produced by Ocugen and Bharat Biotech. Can you tell us more about this partnership? and how it's extending vaccine availability around the world. First of all, uh, thank you uh, to the conference organizers for the opportunity to join this great panel. Um, again, um, uh, Covaxin, um, um, the collaboration with Bharat Biotech, um, they're doing an enormous amount of effort, um, a great team. Um, this is, again, expanding this vaccine availability you know, in the future to North America, you know, we we're trying to bring it to US and Canada. And not only we are going to bring it, we also initiated technology transfer to US manufacturing site. That means globally, you know, we can improve the supply. Uh, once again, it's a differentiated vaccine. Um, um, we just wanted to have many differentiated vaccines in our arsenal to, um, you know, um, to contribute to, you know, controlling this pandemic, which is extremely important. And can you say about how you might use that for less advantaged parts of the world as well? We've heard from uh, from many people during this India Global Forum, for example, yesterday, the foreign minister of the Gambia saying that he had run out of vaccines there. So I think um, globally, um, we have to contribute um, as we increase our global supply. Our partners are increasing their capacities. Um, they'll reach, uh, you know, about 700 million doses a year eventually. And we're also going to add our capacity to that. Our goal is, again, the pandemic, uh, we have to, as we capacities increase, not only the countries, you know, where we have the UAs or planning to get the UAs, we're going to continue to expand our base and contribute to even uh, USC is contributing uh, heavily to global vaccine diplomacy. And we're hoping they're going to do a lot more of that in the future. And we're hopeful as we continue the regulatory path in the U.S. and Canada, 
and we'll be able to contribute from our side and join hands with Bharat Biotech. Again, we're tightly working with them on the technical issues and everything else. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very hard working team and our hearts go to, goes out to all the people of the world who are struggling and suffering with this disease. And we're ready to spray. Thank you. Odette, let's come to you. The insurance industry has been hugely disrupted and critical during the pandemic. As the vaccines start to take hold around the world, is that something that you're now able to price in? Um, yes, in fact, um, the insurance industry, as you said, has been disrupted, but has never uh, stopped uh, to do the job, meaning that uh, the uh, health coverage that we are, uh, as insurers, offering to the populations uh, almost uh, everywhere in the, in the world has continued uh, to work uh, even within uh, this, uh, this pandemic. And uh, we have tried to contribute as much as we, as we could uh, to this uh, to this difficult situation and to find some solutions. I mean, first, uh, what we've done is that uh, we've been able to 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 offer support and vaccines to our employees, of course, but as well to the insured uh, people. Uh, it has been a fantastic opportunity to offer telemedicine in uh, each and every country, and we are launching uh, next week. Uh, an initiative in India about uh, about telemedicine. So it has been for the insurance industry an opportunity to to to, to get one step further uh, uh, for the insured uh, for the insured uh, people, and uh, to go one step further as well in the partnership and cooperation with pharma companies, with governments, uh, with tech providers with all the uh, ecosystem uh, which is able today to uh, face this pandemic situation and to try and improve uh, the, uh, the situation. Thank you. We've had a question submitted uh, from Tamil Nadu, from Dr. Pan Pandian. He's asking that, keeping in mind that the cl clinical trials for vaccines for children below the age of 12 isn't approved yet. What's the future status for education for primary, children, primary school aged children attending school physically? Because he points out that parents are also worried about a third wave, which may hit this group. I wonder uh, if Dr. Chachaiwala, you could address that. It's correct that as of now, the vaccine is uh, all the vaccines in India are approved only for uh, adults above 18 years, but the clinical trials are undergoing uh, for uh, the people under 18, the students especially. And as soon as the safety, uh, which is the biggest concern in such case, is established and immunogenicity, I am sure the vaccines will be available to the students also. But uh, yes, it will take some time. So here's a question. What have you learned from this that you could apply to the next uh, pandemic? Dr. Musanori, what would you say to that? I think uh, it, it's about collaboration. I mean, if you look at uh, globally, um, you know, many private public partnerships um, on collaboration and innovation, how Pfizer collaborated with BioNTech and how we are collaborating a global vaccine play, Bharat Biotech, I think collaboration is very important. I would say collaboration, 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 three different levels. One is uh, the regulatory mindset. We need to think global. Uh, we cannot think at the national level. In the middle of a pandemic, the best way you can do control the pandemic is, how do you vaccinate 70% you know, of the people globally, not at the national level? That's how you control the pandemic. Then you get the herd immunity. So to achieve that, Let's say there's a vaccine which is approved in many countries, you know, and, and it's in millions of people. They should have a, a central system where it can be easily deployed across the globe, you know, uh, rather than going through the regulatory process again and again. So you need to have a global mindset. That's number one. Number two, uh, we need to continue the collaborations, uh, public partnerships on a manufacturing and supply chain. That's extremely important. 
so that you know you need to be looking forward for the future pandemic not only controlling the current one how do we entice it so we can have a, a streamlined manufacturing global supply plan uh, whenever the next pandemic comes the third one is as i mentioned before you have different technology platforms you need to have differentiated vaccine not one type that's very important to control any pandemic so those are the three key elements again collaboration 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 thank you, you need we've to think a, global we've got a minute left odette i'd love to finish with you what did you learn that you can apply to the next pandemic um i was about to say exactly the same thing i mean collaboration and solidarity i mean it's really this kind of situation where it is not an option it is not an option to have solidarity between the countries. It's not about an option to have solidarity between all these stakeholders uh, around around the world. And as insurance company, I mean, we, we are fully engaged. We are fully on the same uh, line, and uh, we have uh, we have tried and succeeded in going much further than what we, was, we were used uh, to, to, to do. And I think it's really, I mean, it, it uh, teaches us uh, to behave differently and solidarity definitely is not an option. Thank you very much to Odette Cesari from AXA Life, to Dr. Chautaiwale in charge of Foreign Affairs Department, EJP, and to Dr. Shankar Musunari from Occugen. <laughs>